Hi, my name is Dave. Today we're going to look at the very unusual Borg 100 millimeter. This telescope is unusual because it fits into this tube. At least most of it does. Wait until you see how it works. This telescope dates from the late 80s, I believe. And they were making something like this up through the 90s. Uh, they stopped putting it in this uh, tube kind of a thing here at some point in the 90s. Uh, for good reason, probably, but they're still using the same kind of uh, an equatorial mount or Altaz equatorial, pseudo equatorial mount. Um, this is one of the many innovations on this scope. I really, I love the idea. I'm not sure if I like the execution. Let me show you how this works. First of all, it's fairly straightforward Altaz, like so. It's got locks here, and there's a lock back here, and then it's got slow motions here. And you can see it working there. Now, if you'll notice here on the front, it's got a little uh, latitude indicator. <laughs> right now, it's hanging there. It just hangs there like that got this little latitude indicator here and there's a reason for that. Uh, I would call this a pseudo a pseudo equatorial mount because when you loosen this locking clamp here you can lower this down and set <laughs> the latitude here. Let's set it at 40. Lock it down as best you can. Now you've got at least theoretically, a uh, sort of an equatorial mount. Now with it th in this position, I can track something. If the ecliptic is going to be right up there. This is going to be the North Star back behind me. And I can track something on the ecliptic pretty nicely with the mount in this configuration. Except the thing, that the, the base is too, this, this mount is, uh, it's very innovative, but it's not optimal. It doesn't work well. So, at least with this scope, with a, with a smaller scope, it might work better. So, here we have the equatorial tracking kind of a deal. So, I can lock down the clamp, and then I've got equatorial motion here. Can you see how much this, I'm sure you can see how much this is shaking. This is like, uh, just very, very frustrating to try and use this mount. It's much more effective as an Altaz mount. So, as an Altaz mount, it's a bit better. Uh, and with this great big huge 4-inch lens in here, uh, <laughs> that's another issue with this particular scope. Look at how, look at how, balance, how off balance that is. I got, there's a pretty good chunk of glass and it's right about here. This is a dew shield and the glass is right about here. So, it's like maybe 650 millimeters or so focal length. It doesn't really tell you, but it's about that. Anyway, it's a 4-inch. Uh, it's just too big of lens to put on this OTA and this mount. It's just way too much. But now, as an Altaz mount, this thing works pretty well. You get it balanced here. It's not bad. Not bad at all as an Altaz. It's still, see how shaky it is? Just horrible. You can't, this, this single pole here is just useless. They put the same mount on a tripod, and I think that's probably a vast improvement. Uh, the, this pier thing here is not good. Okay, so now we're going to put the telescope in a tube here. You have to remove this eyepiece. That's very important. Okay, we now have the whole telescope in this tube. With this size objective, you can't get this mount in there. But with the smaller objective, you could. This is the way this clever little base works. Very easy. This clamp, this just clamps it down. Very nice. It's actually pretty stiff. All things considered, I don't think this is the weakest part, the mount. This thing goes in here. These 
are not original. They're the same thread though. And but these are a real pain in the neck. You have to line up the screw holes, get this started. There are four of them, so it takes quite a while, at least for me. You put those guys in. That's a bit time consuming. That's a bit of extra work. Here's a close-up of the mount. You can see that it's uh, pretty straightforward. Nothing much to it. Just the clamping mechanism. There's the clamp for um, altitude. To take this off, it's not too complicated. Comes right off like that. This has got to be a weak point too here. But the weakest point is this. This is horrible. And I think maybe it might be more successful if you left it like that. If you leave it down here, it's still pretty wobbly. It's not as bad though. It's very in innovative. Man, I really like that. By the way, this is all, this is plastic. The tube is plastic. It's all very lightweight. The tube on the OTA is also plastic. All these parts here are lightweight plastic. PVC, I think. Even this thing. Uh, there's metal inserts there. That's always a pain with plastic interacting with metal is always... Uh, I don't like it. I don't I frown on that. The focuser here, believe it or not, take a look at this focuser. The focuser has notches cut in this PVC tube and that's how the focuser works. Interesting, huh? The turret here is, this is all PVC. This is a 100 millimeter Acromet. They also made uh, 72, I think, millimeters and 62 millimeters, something like that. They made a couple of smaller Acromets, um, well, they made ED Apos that would fit on this, which is kind of surprising. I think those may have had carbon fiber tubes. I'm not sure. Anyway, so I, I strongly suspect that whatever happened on this, with this plastic tube, those were all Acromets, uh, less expensive optics. Let me remove this. All right, so there's the objective and cell and the whole bit. It's all there. Now I made a sort of a pseudo mock-up of a 70 millimeter or maybe 60 millimeter. This would be about what a 70 millimeter F500 would look like on this scope. Okay, so here's what it would look like with say about a 70 millimeter lens in there. Much more appropriate for this for this scope. And now it will balance back here somewhere something like that. So that will be uh, probably a much more sort of a useful scope, especially since, as you'll see, this will now fit inside the tube, including the mount. This scope has a Huygens 50 millimeter eyepiece, which is really good because that's now your finder eyepiece. You put that in the, in the telescope and now this is your finder. So you have your straight through finder. You can use a flip mirror to go to one of your eyepieces. And that comes out like so. This is, by the way, fit for a two inch. You can use two inch eyepieces in there or whatever. Let me take this uh, turret off. First of all, the turret can be rotated to different positions if you want. But the main thing is it can be removed. Now let's have a close look at this turret. These are all set up for inch and a quarter eyepieces. You just take out these little plugs and you put your inch and a quarter eyepieces in there. The only thing that's holding an inch and a quarter eyepiece though is friction. So it's a little bit, it makes me a little nervous, but um, it seems to work okay. So the way this flip mirror works is very simple. It's got a 
This is just a flip that flips down. A little button right here flips it down. This is what the outfit looks like with the simulated 70 millimeters stored inside. I've got everything in there. This is what my 70 millimeter simulated 70 millimeter scope looks like on the mount. Now I have the Borg set up to the infamous Tasco 19T. This is a 60 millimeter by 800 millimeter focal length telescope in a tube. It all fits in this tube. I've got a review on this scope. You want to check that out. Um, which one is better? I'd say both of them, <laughs> neither one of them is any good at all. Because of the mounts, the mounts are just too shaky. This one, is, it's not, surely not great. And this one is absolutely horrible. The only way to make this thing usable is to lower this down. All the way. Even then, it's still pretty shaky. This really, this doesn't work. This, it, I'm sorry, it just doesn't work. These things do not work. The mounts are terrible. This might work with, uh, you know, a 60 millimeter scope, short focal length, 500 or something, but uh, it surely doesn't work with this big um, four inch aperture telescope. The same thing is true with this 800 millimeters is probably worse than this at 600 millimeters or so. So uh, I don't think either one of these is very good scope. But boy, are they interesting. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this Borg 100 Acromat from the late 80s. Thank you for watching.